Merry Christmas, everybody. This is certainly not how we wanted to worship with you today, and it's going to be a little different than all of our other online services, but uh, we appreciate you bearing with us and joining us for service. I do want to remind everybody, I posted this on Facebook yesterday, but I was reminding myself of a verse in Psalms 138, verse 8, that says, The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not abandon the work of your hands. So no matter what life throws at us, no matter the curveballs that come, God already knows, and nothing can stop his purpose for our lives. So uh, join us today. I hope you'll find it uh, at least interesting how it's a little bit different. Uh, you're going to see different people in different settings, uh, but we hope you uh, have a great time and, and sing along with us. The next candle that we light is the praise candle. In oh, wrong side. In it says in Matthew chapter two, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judah, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? He saw his star when it rose and have came to worship him. And after they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed on coming to the house. They saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. After having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Sweet hymns of joy. 
to baby boy would one day walk on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you've delivered would soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm a storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. Oh, Mary, did you know? The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again. The lame will leap, the mute will speak, the praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know that your baby boy was Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know? That your baby boy would one day rule the nations. Did you know that your baby boy was heaven's perfect lamb? And the sleeping child you're holding is the great high. Merry Christmas. Well, hey, everybody. I hope everybody's having a great day and a merry, merry Christmas. <laughs> hey, well, you know what I was thinking about? I was thinking about how, uh, honestly, Christmas has a lot of meaning, you know, for so many people. 
It is a beautiful time when we celebrate family. It's a beautiful time. I mean, look at the tree behind me. I'm not bragging about the tree. No, don't get the, don't, 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 don't take it the wrong way. But the colors, the colors are so vibrant. And, you know, it, despite the falling leaves and the beautiful fo summer foliage and all the beautiful flowers we've seen have started to fall and droop, uh, and here we have this kind of last uh, gathering of color and a last time to celebrate. But I think about Christmas means a lot of things to people uh, that are rich. You know, for some people, of course, it means presents. Uh, but for some people, it means uh, a variety of memories um, from loved ones who are no longer with us, maybe to time spent in the uh, intensive care unit at the hospital or a time at a funeral. There's so many, many memories or loved ones who are no longer with us um, that we can think of. Uh, we do live in a challenging time, a very challenging time indeed. But I think about this great gift and I've been thinking about why do we celebrate Christmas? Well, you know, I think about the gift that we have been given and funny enough, um, it's a great gift that is phenomenal, that if Christ had not been born, we would be hopeless. We would not have anything. We would just be consumers. But no, listen to what God says we are because of this great gift. He says in Romans 3 here, he says, but now, uh, t verse 21, the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. What do they bear witness to? The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe, for there is no distinction for all, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and all are justified by his grace as a gift, as a gift. You see, there's so many presents this season. Yes, thank God we do have packages under the tree. And I know this is a different Christmas for many, just like us. Our social calendar is usually booked this time of year. Uh, and yet now we basically hardly do anything. But we do have this to ponder, this great gift of faith we have. Oh, blessed Lord, thank you. Hey, as you go about this Christmas, would you think about that great gift? And would you think about this great luxury given by our Savior, who chose by the will of God to be born? For Christmas' sake, yes, but for the will of God, and so may it be in our lives. Y'all have a blessed Christmas, okay? All right. Bye-bye, y'all. Today was supposed to be our Christmas program, uh, and many people had worked hard at, at preparing for that, and a um, few of them, you got to see the specials that you would have gotten to hear in person today, and I appreciate them and their willingness to video themselves and to uh, send it to us so we could post it online. It's not the easiest thing to do to sing to a phone or a video camera. But I was thinking about that. I was thinking about plans and how plans can change and how plans generally don't work out the way that we want them to. Uh, many of you know already and have read in the email that my family and I are quarantining right now. My mother-in-law has tested positive for COVID. We appreciate all the prayers and thoughts. Thank y'all. But it was never in our plan that we would spend Christmas break stuck in this house in quarantine. And I thought about how this could ruin Christmas. But then God laid it on my heart 
And I remembered that regardless of what's going on in the world, what's going on in my life, what's going on in, in other people's lives, you can't stop Christmas. Because Christmas isn't about the tree or the presents or the ornaments or the lights. Christmas is about something more. And God reminded me of a story, and I'd like to share that with you this morning. We're going to look at um, a character from the Christmas story that we don't often talk about, King Herod. Micah read a part of the passage from Matthew chapter 2. Let me fill in the details in the middle. After the Magi had arrived, it says in chapter 2, verse 3, When King Herod heard this, he was deeply disturbed. And all Jerusalem with him. So he assembled all the chief priests and the scribes of the people and asked them where the Messiah would be born. In Bethlehem of Judea, they told him, because this is what was written by the prophets. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the leaders of Judah, because out of you will come a leader who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly summoned the wise men and asked them the exact time the star appeared. He had sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go, search carefully for the child. When you find him, report back to me so that I too can go and worship him. Now we know that Herod had no intention of worshiping him. He had a much more devious, evil plan. He didn't like the idea of a new king in town. So Herod's plan was to kill him. And we know from the story that the Lord warned the Magi. And so by way of dream, they were told not to go back to Herod. So they went a different route. And after Herod had discovered that they had left, he ensued upon killing so many children, all in the attempt to stop Christmas. So all the way back to the very first Christmas, Satan has been trying to stop Christmas. And do you know what? Every year he's failed. Because he can't stop Christmas. Because it already came. And it already happened. And whether we celebrate it together or whether we celebrate it apart, as long as we keep our eyes focused on Jesus, we'll remember the true reason of Christmas. It's not about the presents. It's not about the lights. It's not about the, the songs or the carols or the, or the tree or the decorations. It's not even about the food or the desserts, which we all know that I love. It's about Jesus. And that's something we can celebrate each and every day. So regardless of my plans changing, regardless of the curveballs that life has thrown us this year, this week, this holiday, can't stop Christmas. So from my family to yours, I hope you have a very Merry Christmas. God bless. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for your hand of protection upon all of us. Thank you for your hand of healing upon those who are sick or ill, Father. Father, I pray that you would watch over all our guests, all our visitors, all our members, all those who need you, Father. Father, I know that we are not together, and this decision did not come lightly. And Lord, I, I, I do not like being apart from my church family, but I know that we are all together worshiping you this morning. And I pray, Father, that you would lift us up, that we keep our eyes fixed on the cross and not the tree, and that we would have a great and merry Christmas. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your son. Thank you for that first Christmas that could never be stopped. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.